evening. Good to have you with us in this edition of the Urban Debate. One more time, the spotlight is on India's battle against coronavirus. Starting tonight, viewers, every day we will pick up a few states and speak about initiatives, efforts, steps taken by these states. Now, first, let me explain to you why we are going to do this. While there is a central policy, while the central government is leading this fight against coronavirus, a lot of it actually depends on how individual states, their government, their administration, officials, authorities, policemen, healthcare workers are able to implement the initiatives on ground. So while a policy gets designed with everybody together on board, a lot of it actually depends on what you and I as citizens in each state are also doing. And tonight, we begin with focus on three specific states. And as I go through these states, I will explain to you why we have picked up these states and why we are talking about them tonight. Because even if one state lags behind, even if one state isn't doing enough, that could impact the nation's fight against coronavirus. And we don't want that, do we? So let's begin with Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu was one of those states which in the initial days, barely saw any cases. They watched any cases at all in the initial few days while the rest of the country had begun to see the infection spread. But now things are different. Here is how things stand when it comes to Tamil Nadu. 1,267 cases, 15 deaths so far. In fact, in terms of hotspots and high number of cases zones, Tamil Nadu now kind of tops the charts. It has 22 of these spots and it's literally on the same level now as states like Maharashtra. So something's changed there in the last few weeks. Total number of samples tested till April 16th is about 26,000. Here is a data point that actually gives you an insight of where the state stands in terms of finding out the truth on ground. Tests per million. Tamil Nadu has done 382 tests per million people. Now, if you compare it to the other states, it's far, far behind than what it should be doing. Let's start the conversation with Tamil Nadu. And then we will also go across to West Bengal and then Madhya Pradesh. Each of these have their own distinct, unique qualities about how they're dealing with coronavirus. Tonight, I want to start off by saying good evening to Kovai Satyan, spokesperson for the AIA DMK, Dr. Tyagarajan Sundaraman, Global Coordinator of People's Health Movement, Dr. Prabhakaran, cardiologist and epidemiologist, Vice President for the Public Health Foundation of India. In fact, Dr. Prabha Prabhakaran, let me begin with you, and you'll also be staying with us through this conversation as we go from one state to the other. Let's talk about why it's important to also individually look at what the states are doing and if we have some leaders and laggards, what kind of impact can it have on the country's fight? Right. Uh, thank you for having me on this uh, show. Uh, you asked a very important question because I think uh, when you look at India, it is like having multiple countries uh, within the subcontinent and each of these have will have different uh, R naughts. If you recall, R naught is a number which uh, actually indicates how many people a person who's infected can infect further. And that's highly variable on the whole, uh, in the country on an average, it said that it's around 2.2, 2.3, but it can vary anywhere between 1.5 in some states to even three in other states. So I think disaggregated data in terms of uh, what uh, the state level uh, data could be and what the state level action could be is important to know. And I think uh, this is an important program in that respect. Okay, um, let's begin with, uh, you know, the one of the data points that we are looking at, Dr. Prabhakaran, which is uh, the test per million. Now, if we look at various yeah. states, there are some, including even, you know, places like Delhi that have done uh, a high number from 700 to 800 tests per million, which also, I mean, uh, uh, relatively speaking, isn't high enough. But then there are others uh, like Bengal and Bihar, That's they've not even done 100 tests per million people. And somewhere there lies Tamil Nadu. Um, how important is this statistic to judge the state's, uh, you know, state of affairs? 
while it's important to uh, use testing as a criteria, the number of uh, tests performed per million population is a useful criteria. It's also important to understand how the tests are done. How are we selecting our people for testing? Are the criteria very liberal? Are the criteria very stringent? Or should it be intermediate? I think uh, obviously we cannot test the whole 1.3 billion population in this country because it's going to be very expensive. It's not going to be cost effective. And if you do tests on people with uh, low risk, the chances of having a false positive is higher. And therefore, we should uh, uh, prudently use the test. Uh, obviously, 45 or 50 per million is extremely low. And um, if you're going to use what we call as a pre-test probability, the chances of people having uh, infection, which is higher, then um, the number could come down to around whatever we have in Delhi or other places. The second thing that should be useful in terms of testing is to actually see how many people are infected because that gives you a wider number and you can plan accordingly. Uh, but I don't, I, I cannot exactly tell you what that number should be. If you look at South Korea, for example, it's huge. US, it's huge. But, but then there are countries like Japan, for example, which have done lower number of testing and have done very well. I think you have to prudently use the tests. B, you, you should embellish these tests with certain clinical criteria, fever or a high risk of having that infection, uh, exposure to a contact, uh, travel, which is not um, important right now, so, so on and so forth. Okay, uh, point well taken. Let me also go across to our other panelists. And actually, as I go to Kovai, I just want to highlight two instances that should have any state worried. And these two instances are uh, from Tamil Nadu. Uh, there was one mass gathering that took place a couple of days ago for the funeral of a Jallikatta bull. And then there was a Corona feast that was also organized, I believe, yesterday. Now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong on any of these two cases, Kovai, but when such instances happen, four weeks into a lockdown, it does raise an alarm. You are right. Yes, whoever has uh, held that uh, feast, Corona feast, is being booked and 18 of them were remanded. Yes, there are people who are enthusiastic people who doesn't take things seriously. They want to take things lightly, but law doesn't permit them to take things lightly. So we have dealt with an iron hand on the same. But however, yes, to add to whatever the data points which you mentioned in your inaugural uh, speech, you said about 24 zones. Those are all 24 districts out of 38. So as of now, TN stands with 558 containment zones. So we are very well prepared and we understand. And this is indeed the first state which talked about the containment zone of having a 7 kilometer radius around a COVID positive case. And yes, this is the only state which now uh, had done almost close to 1 crore population screening on a door-to-door -door basis. Uh, so we are geared up for the next stage. As you rightly pointed out, when will be the mass testing will start? And today we received 24,000 kits of the rapid test. Uh, kits out of the four lakhs which we have ordered and the rapid test kit will start functioning from tomorrow in the entire districts. However, the PCR test kits which we have currently stands at a lakh and 95. So I would say that despite banking more on rapid test kits, this government has carefully uh, played its cards around the PCR test kits and as well as the, uh, the, the other uh, PPE equipments and ventilators. Uh, the data and everything on a day by day basis. Yesterday, Chief Minister had given a 25 page uh, circular to everybody, including the media. So, I would say that yes, the, the state has acted on a per foot basis on many fronts uh, to curtail and contain this uh, epidemic. And uh, at, at, la, at, at the least, mm -hmm. we can be that we will not uh, move to the zone uh, three. Uh, we are at stage two now, and we are hopeful that we will not move to stage three. Okay, but uh, help me understand, what is the internal analysis on how suddenly Tamil Nadu went from having no cases at all to having the one of the highest number of red zones, uh, uh, you know, or hot spots? Uh, do you believe that maybe uh, you were not serious enough about this initially? We had far too many instances of people still on the streets. Tamil Nadu uh, it was the last state uh, to start implementing uh, restrictions before the lockdown was announced. Even after that, people were not being allowed to move around. There were traffic jams. Had you acted sooner, would you have had lesser red zones and containment zones today, Kovai? Since you are in media, you are very well aware. 
the initial corona cases when the data were being given out by the government the government used to mention the people who attended that tablighi jamaat in delhi and 93% of the cases for the first 8 days were for the people who had attended almost 1500 people from this state has attended and india you would have noticed that cm had sent a circular requesting them to come forward and identify themselves for the state so of late in the last one week the government has stopped giving the data segregating the data of the number of positive cases however majority of them are identified and whoever has been identified as a corona positive they have been treated and we are glad that even the the number of people who are getting discharge are increasing day by day so the major chunk of component of tamil nadu cases pertain to a single source which is which is what we currently refer to other than that whoever has traveled from abroad the cases were been identified and we are we are happy to share that the communal transmission has not started in it is all the people who are travel from abroad and all the other cases have direct contacts with the people who are tested positive uh, who had come from abroad uh, so this briefing is been given every day to the media along with the source of this covid and what are all the zones which is been there the entire zones are been clearly earmarked and as there is a good amount of cooperation from the, the tamil nadu people and yes they understand the sensitiveness and they understand the kind of mammoth task that the government has undertaken in in this in this turbulent times uh so yes there are plethora of measures that the chief minister has also kicked in in terms of taking care of the migrant labor so that they don't get they don't feel that they are displaced and the resources doesn't reach them on time a lakh and 34 uh, migrant population are being fed uh, every day across okay. all the zones in the majority of the yeah. uh, corporation zones and the government has taken okay, very quickly care. before i go across to dr tyagarajan so why i just wanted to ask you you gave me information on the action that's been taken in the corona feast case what about the funeral of the jallikatta bull what happened in that case what action has been taken uh, probably it slipped out of my mind uh, tanvi i don't have data in my hand right now but yes however i can i can tweet you back once the show is over okay all right uh, dr tyagarajan thank you for patiently waiting uh, your own sense on the steps that tamil nadu has taken uh, yes there has been significant change in the last few days even the central government in its briefing today said that as far as the doubling of cases rate is concerned tamil nadu does have a higher rate which means that they are doing something right to reduce the number of cases but what went wrong initially how did it suddenly turn up with the highest number of red zones and so many cases so i have uh, at one point i think tamil nadu in some areas has done well but i am really really worried that they are misleading themselves and misleading others quite unintentionally perhaps on this whole narrative of one single source the tablighi jamaat through which everything happened it is a fact that 89% of cases or 80% of cases come from this single source but what is also peculiar to tamil nadu no very few other states have it is that 80% of cases are asymptomatic usually covid is very well known to be associated with fever and think asymptomatic is low but they seem to have picked up so many asymptomatics simply because the testing was directed down this particular chain of transmission and missed all other chains of transmission do we know it missed it does it exist outside i can't be sure but one thing we do know all influenza like illnesses and severe acute respiratory infections must must be tested because influenza is far more susceptible it has a much lesser ro factor than covid 19 and would be completely prevented or at least much better prevented by your uh, whole process of uh, social distancing so if you do not test people who have fever and who are more likely to have then you don't get symptomatic cases you land up getting asymptomatic cases and since you are testing asymptomatic cases around one chain of transmission you assume there is no other chain of transmission now madras corporation has started testing for ili which is influenza like illness and i am sure they are going to find a lot more positive cases and then they may have to you know no need they need not cover up they should accept the fact that 22 high hotspots exist why are some doctors getting affected here why are nurses getting affected here they weren't in delhi you can say they were in contact many of them are getting affected because in their patient pool that they are seeing there are positive cases that are just not being picked up 
Now, when you go to this hot spots also, this seven kilometer radius thing, so far you take it. It doesn't spread through the air in a physical way. It spreads through people. It spreads through social networking. It spreads through contacts that people have. So you have to focus on isolating, testing, and tracing, which I think Tamil Nadu is going to get. I know that in the last two days, they have introduced testing for uh, influenza-like illness, but so far, it's just not there. And that's why they are getting asymptomatic contacts of one particular source and nothing else. So I'm worried when the lockdown lifts up, if they don't start testing for all people with influenza-like illness and severe uh, they, they will not even know where the transmission is. And that's another problem with the hotspots. You have no real adequate basis, data-driven basis, by which you define your hotspots. So you have made some presumptions, you made it in good faith, but there's no reason to think that that is somewhat more reliable than any other that you could have made. And you may be missing large clusters because you're not testing symptomatics. It's as simple as that. The other problem which is also comes from the single source and the way Tamil Nadu government has treated it, is a high degree, an un, un, usually high degree of stigmatization has set in within Tamil Nadu. People are beating up doctors. It's mm -hmm. never happened. It's never happened in the HIV epidemic also, where stigmatization was there. People are, because you feel this community had something. So the message that we need to send in Tamil Nadu is, Physical distancing reduces risk. It does not eliminate risk. If you get the disease, don't feel Correct. guilty and blame yourself. And if your neighbor gets the disease or someone else gets the disease, or don't get angry and blame others for your getting the disease. This disease will spread. And at some point, if you have such a high degree of stigmatization, people just won't come forward. The symptomatic people will take a paracetamol and sit in their house when you come around because they are afraid you'll pick it up because then your community may get similarly stigmatized to this repeated rant about the single uh, uh, source that they are going on to. You just have to stop that and recognize that you the fact that you have got only a single source is not your strength, it's your weakness. And the moment you start searching, you will get okay. more sources. Taminad has done well. Otherwise, let, it's, let got, me, it's, it's, it's got carried away in its narrative. Some of the points that you raised, Dr. Thiagarajan, um, if I can actually just uh, come in here and get a response from Kovai Satyan of the AIA DMK, especially on the fact uh, of the, you know, this, uh, uh, the issue that you raised of the narrative being tilted towards uh, people who travel for one event to Delhi, Nizamuddin, and the second one being about not enough testing or how much more testing needs to be so done. Even the bull, respond to those so after the Delhi Kate event, where is my the testing, where is the follow-up? My fellow doctor missed a couple of points which I mentioned. However, there is a new weightage being given to whatever he is saying. There is a standard operating procedure from the WHO. Yes, currently with the level of PCR test kits what we have, Yes, whatever the home quarantine people are there, the home quarantine list is being sent out every day. 14 days of completion, 28 days of completion. People who show symptoms are the ones who are being tested first. This is SOP given from the WHO itself. So now talking about, you have to cross the bridge when you reach there. Now, when since we have received rapid test kits, now the mass testing of the random sampling will start happening. The doctor missed the point what I mentioned. In the containment zone, People from the health department, along with the corporation, went on a door-to-door -door screening, asking people, are you down with fever? Is there any symptoms with you? And they have identified people and people who had come in, a couple of cases have tested positive as well. So we are not ranting about a single source or we are not saying that the entire epidemic, uh, we are finding a reason is because of that. We have crossed that uh, bridge long back of that narrative saying that it is a single source, it is because of that Tamil Nadu is reeling under COVID. We are not saying that. All we are saying is we have a systematic approach and the approach is being put in place and we have called in experts and the government is open to receive the comments like the one which the doctor had given right now. Mass testing will happen only when you get the rapid test kits and today is the first consignment yeah. of 24,000 which has hit the states. So now PCR test kits are the one which is going to give the final verdict. Government doesn't wait for increasing its numbers. A lack in 95 PCR test kits, I by far, I think, one of the highest stock in anywhere in South India is there with TN right now. Uh, 33,000 beds yeah. still counting and increasing, and 10,000 uh, beds are being planned in Chennai itself. 
the government is adding infrastructure and capacities every day so we welcome any more valuable suggestions which you feel might add that the states could get over with covid at the earliest so in fairness okay, to Dr. the Thiyadu, cabinet, I think you uh, want to add to this yeah, in, in fairness, many of the protocols of not testing the symptomatics came from Delhi. The testing kits was not available, whereas the other states that other countries that did it started by indigenous manufacture of testing kits. We haven't yet gone there. We have just started very late on these. So I don't hold the Tamil Nadu government. My point is only that they should not get misled by the fact that they have so many asymptomatic cases and this, they have a problem. They will perhaps deal with the problem, but the core of it is to define it with much better data based on wider testing of symptomatics. And I think they are getting there. And this hotspots is this complete banning of two lanes, three lanes. Well, okay, perhaps but it's much more important to see the social mixing patterns. Sometimes it will be if there's a village market, then it will be the surrounding 30 kilometers. Sometimes it's five kilometers. And I think there's a problem with that, which is neither data driven nor very different. And finally, I really think that your fever searches, and I know this from the ground, they are doing well. I think I happy that that is happening but stigma has to be strongly contest, uh, countered by a government campaign with this level of stigma people will not come forward and you want people to volunteer and come forward and say look i'm not feeling well please test me unless you reach that stage if they are afraid of your teams coming around then you are not going to help and there is a fair degree of stigma that you need to counter why about these doctors getting assaulted. It doesn't happen. It didn't happen in earlier stigmatization. Correct. We have had stigma for leprosy. We have had stigma for HIV. We've never had attacks on doctors. We have an unprecedented level of stigma at this because the subtext of our message spreads a feeling of guilt, over projects the role that physical distancing can do. So it has a lot of problems in the way we have messaged it. So unless we change the way we have messaged mm -hmm. it, it's, it's all right. Physical distancing will help, but it's not a cure-all. And if you get illness, don't worry. We are there to take care of you, and the community stands by you. Emphasize community solidarity. Bring the community into play. Make them your partners rather than use the police force to isolate them, corner them, threaten them in some sense, right. you know, this FIRs. I do think they should not do the jelly cut, but I'm not asking for an FIR to be filed there. I just want you to have a talk with them and say, please yes. be more careful and get tested earlier. That would be from my side enough. Yes, okay, no, I mean, that's the point area. there was also to highlight, uh, Dr. Tiagarajan, uh, that, you know, these, these kind of events shouldn't be happening. By now, we should have been able to get the message that's across correct. to almost everybody uh, the, that there has to be some sense of responsibility, some amount of conscience that people also have, some amount of fear also but that if they resort to something like this, there will be repercussions and consequences. And I hope Kovai, so who doesn't have point. the information right now, is able to get back to us at a later time about the action that was taken and the test that was done because just because it was a uh, funeral of a jelly cutter bull doesn't mean that we take it any less strictly or seriously. I'm sorry, I'm out of time uh, uh, for this part of the conversation. So I'm going to thank Kowai as well as Dr. Tiagarajan uh, for joining us. My apologies, but we were a little short on time on this one. Now, before I move on to the next state, I just want to go through the data as far as testing per million is concerned. Right on top, in terms of the highest amount of testing that's really happened, is Delhi, where they have carried out 930 tests per million people. Now, this is as of 15th of April that I'm giving you. Obviously, in the last couple of days, it may have gone up a little bit, one or two numbers, but not no significant changes happen. Kerala follows Delhi. Kerala has done wonders in terms of coming out of the state of affairs that it was in the last few weeks, and now... The number of cases that it's reporting on a daily basis has actually come down to single digits. So Kerala uh, is actually uh, uh, a state that carried out 520 tests per million people. Tamil Nadu was 382. A little below Maharashtra that's carried out 445 tests per million people. And then there is Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka, Punjab, Bihar and West Bengal. Now West Bengal so far viewers 
has carried out about 3,811 tests. That's just about 41 tests per million. Now, what else does the West Bengal statistic show to us? That's what we need to see. They've so far have 255 cases, so much lower, but then they are also testing very, very uh, less. So we don't know the extent of spread. There are uh, a series of uh, questions that have been raised on the amount of testing that's taken place. And unfortunately, when it comes to West Bengal, there is always some amount of politics that is also involved. Right in March itself, uh, in, the, in the last week of March, there was a tussle that took place between the state and the centre with, with Mamta Banerjee, the chief minister, saying that we've not been given enough testing kits. They were barely doing any testing at that point of time. Uh, while the center is saying that we have given you about 10,000, but you are not really using less than what you should be doing. So that kind of exchange of words happened. Now we are standing at a time uh, where the number of cases have come, uh, 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 have come to about 255. And we need to start talking about what West Bengal is doing right or wrong. And if it's still testing enough or not. That's the biggest question right now. Uh, because we are getting multiple reports about the status there where many suggest that the state seems to be going a little easy on imposition of the lockdown. Apart from BJP that's also raised this issue and gone to court, CPIM has also gone to court. And CPIM in fact has also filed a PIL saying that the state government isn't testing enough. Is that what it is? What should be the number of tests that we uh, look at? That's the big question. Uh, let me say good evening to the panelists who are joining us right now. Professor Marajit Mandal, TMC supporter, Dr. Arjun Das Gupta, ENT specialist and president with the West Bengal Doctors Forum. And also I continue to have Dr. Prabhakaran, cardiologist and epidemiologist. Uh, he is the vice president for research and policy for Public Health Foundation of India. And uh, Dr. Prabhakaran, let me come back to you. As we discussed, uh, Tamil Nadu, let's talk a little bit about West Bengal as well. Is there a concern there on the amount of testing that's taking place or not taking place rather? I think uh, the figures that you have quoted uh, really suggest that the testing is extremely low. And obviously the testing uh, needs to be increased because the more the number you test, you will unearth more of, um, uh, you know, uh, more cases. And uh, obviously, you need to use those cases to do contact tracing. I mean, if you have to prevent the progression of the disease, you need to actually get to all the contacts who have been exposed uh, to the virus and isolate them or quarantine them. And um, therefore, it is important to do that testing. What exactly is that optimal testing can be debated. But just looking at the numbers, it appears to be clearly very low. Okay, uh, and uh, you, is it also, uh, you know, what is the extent of correlation that you have uh, with the number of cases that may have emerged? So, for example, in West Bengal, even in the case of Tamil Nadu, we saw that they moved really slowly uh, with the imposition of restrictions and testing because there weren't too many cases initially. And then suddenly it all exploded and, and, and the cases began to go up. So, is that why we're seeing that even in Bengal, there is lesser testing because... For example, right now, we only know of 255 cases and 10 deaths. Right. So, see, the thing is, the testing actually um, uh, gets out a few things. And there are a few things with uh, the testing. Number one is, when you do an optimal amount of testing, you actually unearth an optimal number of cases. And then your mortality also is, is contingent on the number of tests. Suppose you do more tests, you unearth more asymptomatic patients, your number of deaths will be lower because the numerator becomes uh, a fixed number, but the denominator increases. Uh, when you do very low amount of testing, you're not very sure whether the number of cases is actually true, a reflection of what is happening in the community, the number of deaths, is it true? So clearly, uh, you need to increase the test. But on the other hand, if you do what is like, like many people have suggested that you should do mass testing. When you do mass testing, your uh, test results are no longer that credible as when you really select the cases and do. Because if you do mass testing, and even if it turns out to be positive, it could be false positive. So it's just a fine balance between 
how you choose the people for testing, how many number of tests that you do, and what you do once you obtain the test. But beyond that, actually, when we were discussing the Tamil Nadu thing, there were several other things that we that were pointed out. It's important that we need to destigmatize. We need to have a transparent communication with people. We need to create awareness. Only if you create awareness, people will come for testing. And the last thing is that you require the testing kits to be available. And so there are multiple factors that are involved uh, in deciding about how to go about doing the testing. Okay, um, uh, let's also say good evening to Manajit Mandal who's joining us right now. Uh, Mr. Mandal, I am looking at a letter that was written by the Home Ministry, by the Central Government to the West Bengal Government on April 10th. And, and this actually said that as further reports received from security agencies, gradual dilution of lockdown has been reported from West Bengal with an increase in the number of exceptions being provided by the state government. For example, shops relating to non-essentials have been allowed. There is no regulation in vegetable, fish and mutton markets where people are thronging in complete violation of social distancing norms. That is the charge that is repeatedly being put against the West Bengal government. Is the state doing enough to ensure containment of infection absolutely i mean, I mean, I mean this this uh, particular letter i don't want to go into the politics of it but uh, go ahead please i can hear you otherwise there's nothing wrong with the law i mean you're talking about uh, certain non-essential shops i mean how can you call this sweets a non-essential shop when the, the, the milkmen are suffering like anything in Bengal, they are acting very close to essential shop and they, they, those shops are you know, open much later and still they are open. It's because of the fact that the milk industry was badly being you know, bruised. That's why the shops were open for a particular point of time. Otherwise, there's nothing wrong in it. And as far as strong love around people are concerned, I think we have already talked about all these things. I think there was a kind of misreport from the state BJP and especially from the governor on the basis of which this letter was written. Right now in Bengal, there is a containment period that is going on. Mamta Banerjee herself is on the street every other day. There is no issue at all. There, there are some problems here and there. Those things are now being taken care of. You have to understand, you know, uh, 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 can be one very interesting thing that in Bengal it has always been cleared by Mamta Banerjee saying that we are looking at the lockdown not as something that is lock up. Lockdown doesn't mean that you lock people up. You have to keep into mind the human consideration also. We need to make people aware of certain things and people are, I think, getting, getting, get, gradually, they're getting into the groups and they're following the lockdown procedure. And in fact, let me report you, as of now, from, from today only, the Chief Minister held a press conference and a video conference with all the district you know, magistrates and the SPs, and she has given clear instruction to follow up the lock, lockdown properly, especially when there are certain sensitive zones which are being referred to by the central government as hotspots. But no politics, no issue about infection and other things. We are trying our best to contain the infection. There are some pockets which are known as the you know, uh, sensitive zones. Police is taking action in those sensitive areas and people are gradually, gradually coming to terms with all this fact. But again, I repeat, Lockdown doesn't mean that you lock people up. You people, you know, the, the moment the people. Okay, we seem to have lost that line, and also there was a little bit of a pro audio problem there. I'm not too sure if he actually said this, uh, the, but he seemed to be defending the fact that sweet shops are essential. And why should there be any controversy in us opening up more shops? The charge, of course, is uh, that lockdown is not being implemented properly. And that's become the big talking point in, in, in West Bengal. Let me actually ask uh, Dr. Uh, Arjun Das Gupta this question. Dr. Das Gupta, is there a sense that somewhere politics is overshadowing the war against coronavirus in, in the state of Bengal? Um. I'm the, I'm the president of the West Bengal Doctors Forum, the largest uh, forum, about 20,000 doctors in West Bengal. I really don't want to get into the politics. Uh, I, I just want to say that we are doctors and the healthcare workers in the front line, and they need to be protected. So we asked for the PPEs, uh, and we wanted the test numbers to go up. 
the test number should go up irrespective of which state you are in. Our, our test numbers are well low and we have written to our the government and we have seen the test numbers to go up. So that is a good sign. For the last three mm. days, we have consecutively seen that our test numbers are slowly, slowly going up. But we have, we are walking in the right direction, but we have miles to go before we can reach the destination. Because we have standards and we know that, uh, I, I'm sure everybody will know in here, we have heard of the Vietnam model, we have heard of the South Korean model, where they have tested, tested and tested. And we have in our own back door, the Kerala model, where testing is needs to be increased. So we have heard of this ICMR plan that they plan to test about uh, one lakh people per day. And maybe that is the optimum number. And we in, in India, we can do it. And in West Bengal, we need to get the test numbers up. That's the only way test and isolate we can defeat this problem. And also give confidence okay. to the healthcare workers who are fighting in the front line. Because they, if they know, because if they come in contact with a suspect COVID patient, and they uh, spread it to other people, then the, there is a problem. And uh, they need to be identified and sent to quarantine. And that's how exactly in other countries, we have already know that uh, that's how the virus spread through uh, uh, suspect COVID patients and the healthcare workers. So the test numbers need to go up. And, and in fact, I will say that like NHS, all the healthcare workers need to be tested. Okay. I understand you don't want to get into politics and that's fair. That's how it should be. We here at Verena also have refrained from having political debates completely in such difficult times and times of a pandemic. But Dr. Das Gupta, to your mind, what was the problem for the low testing that we were seeing in Bengal? That we didn't have enough kits or, 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 or we were simply just trying to save on the kits or we were not taking it there seriously. There were three problems. What seemed to be the problem? There are three problems. For a, for a testing, you need the laboratories. So ICMR gives a, uh, uh, gives a permission to these laboratories to test. We have very few laboratories. The number needs to go up. ICMR, ICMR needs to really give more and more laboratories the permission to test. Any people who comes with the COVID symptoms with the, any doctor should be able to test uh, for COVID. Number two, there was a problem with the test kit. Now we know for ICMR and from the state government, and they have spoken to each other, we now have enough kits. And the number three is the bureaucracy surrounding with the test. You need to have some permission. You need to uh, fill up some forms. And the results will come back after some time. This needs to go away. The number needs to, the, the turnout needs to be really, really fast. So when we send a, 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 a swap for testing, the, the, the results should be back within the stipulated time, which is 78 hours, an email or a phone call. Or, or, or a printed report. So we know because the suspect COVID patient is the most worrying thing at this minute. We, you have a patient in the ward who is a suspect COVID and you send a swab. And in the meantime, lots and lots of healthcare workers are getting in touch with the patient. In fact, six PPEs are needed for one suspect COVID patient. And uh, unless we get the results quick enough, the more, there are more chances of healthcare workers getting infected. So to give a, a, a assurance to the healthcare workers, the testing needs to go up. The bureaucracy surrounding the testing needs to, uh, needs to vanish. And obviously, the ICMR needs to give a lot of uh, um, permission to a lot of labs. Uh, there are many, many labs in, in West Bengal which can do this test. And they should be roped in because this is a war time. And it's, we are in the front line. We are not going to leave the battlefield. We are prepared. But give us the ammunition. Give us the ammunition and we will fight the war. All right. Now let me get Manojit Mandal to respond to that. Mr. Mandal seems that the testing has only started at a, at a better level now and that a lot more has to be done in terms of protection to the doctors, the healthcare workers and testing seriously needs to be ramped up. Frankly, you, you are actually, uh, you know, uh, the only state worse than you perhaps is Bihar. That's where you stand in the chart when we talk about testing per million people. You see, you have to understand one thing. I think the doctor has already made it very clear that the testing largely depends on the kind of the, how many laboratories that you have in the state. And uh, he, I think he will explain everything that ICMR was not given permission, you know, so far. Even now, till today, let me tell you, 
most of the districts despite the fact that almost every district has got at least one designated covid hospital in bengal we are not giving the permission to test that is also there we have to understand that as well every other district my neighbor is in the first in the country mamta banerji long time back designated one particular hospital as a covid hospital in the district but sadly enough still the central government icm all they are not giving adequate permission to the district level you know hospital that is a problem suppose someone has to test from a place like bakula that was for all the making you know noise uh, two days back he had to go to some other district to get the test done and in the meantime what is happening fake news fake story will be spread you know i, I don't want to do uh, get into all that again until the it appeared that both the patients were were tested negative but in the meantime meanwhile the politics politics was completely you know uh, done by one junior minister for bengal in the in the cabinet and also the uh, unfortunately you know, sister channel so these things need to change they need to be need to be suddenly checked mr wonder i'm sorry i don't know what what um, you know uh, direction you are headed in fake news stories will be exposed is fine you can do that you want to believe sweet shops are essentials and people can it's okay for people to crowd crowd and you know forget social distancing norms because they are buying vegetables or meat and mutton and fish up uh, that's okay. completely then the state government's choice but tomorrow when when more people get infected then the onus will also be on you here is the here is the representative of the doctors association who is sitting here and telling you that they need a lot more ppes that uh, they need must be taken care of uh, uh, it's not just enough to have one covid hospital in every district you need to ensure the people who work in those hospitals are properly taken care of and you ramp up your testing in fact i will correct myself even bihar has a better testing rate than west bengal currently so maybe the state government needs to look at these issues and not simply cry foul about saying oh the center didn't give us the kits all states are managing to get more kits from wherever indigenously manufactured or outside let me answer first of all there is no shortage of ppe Four lakhs people are there in Bengal. If the doctor is saying this, he must get get himself corrected. I'm sorry to say this. No shortage of PPEs, no gloves, no shortage of gloves, no sanitizers, nothing. No problem is there at all. And 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 let me tell you, you can't can't catch everyone and say that come and test. This doesn't happen that way. This is this is new disease. People need to understand it. You can't can't you can't go and you know. Well, if there are no shortage of PPEs and PPEs, then please provide them to the doctors, uh, Mr. Wondal. And the larger point here is that some of the states who are lagging behind need to catch up. The war against coronavirus will only be won, and we will only be defeating this uh, this uh, disease if we fight together and everybody does their own part. Which is why tonight we've started to focus on each state one by one and talk about what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong. So good, you have lesser number of cases, but perhaps you need to increase your testing, and then we can sit and talk about the uh, uh, state of affairs in a deeper fashion. Thank you so much to our panelists, uh, Manojit Mandal and Arjun Das Gupta, for joining us on this conversation. Viewers, this is not about politics, and it's absolutely shameful that some of the political parties, governments. and political leaders are indulging into politics at this point of time so the bjp and the cpim have gone to the court now and have filed a pil dr fuad ali of cpim is fighting that case saying that the west bengal government isn't testing enough this is not the time for politics yes there must be accountability of the state government and they need to ramp up the data suggest show we can only win this fight if every state does its own part without resorting to politics one more state that's possibly bearing the brunt of politics is madhya pradesh that's going to be in the spotlight on the other side back in 2 minutes stay with me welcome back let's put the spotlight now on madhya pradesh another of those states that needs to be discussed separately in terms of its steps against coronavirus the viewers tonight the idea is to break down the nationwide fight into separate states and talk about the laggards those who may be weakening our fight against coronavirus now madhya pradesh is one state that actually saw a government come down and another one being put to part another chief minister 
being sworn in in the middle of this pandemic when the entire country's focus was actually on detecting the number of cases contact tracing isolating the patients and their contacts and treating them madhya pradesh top leaders and officials were actually busy in politics and government formation and not just that we remember we showed you a series of violations that took place at that point of time as political parties went into a hurdle as political parties began to celebrate each step of their victory especially the bjp completely disregarding social distancing norms and now 25 days since the chief minister shivraj singh chauhan took oath there is no cabinet he is not even set up a team of ministers <coughs> who could help him in these times the top officials of the health department are themselves in a hospital as we speak that's the state of affairs in madhya pradesh does the state need to buck up what is it that it's doing right or wrong let's talk about it can it please keep aside politics for a bit and actually talk about the battle against corona virus let's say good evening to rajneesh agrawal state spokesperson for the bjp and dr anand bhan researcher with the global health bioethics and health policy rajneesh agrawal ji itni itna mushkil samay chal raha hai ek pandemic se ye duniya lad rahi hai और एक आपका राज्य है प्रदेश है जहां पे कैबिनेट भी नहीं है देखिए मुझे लगता है कि कैबिनेट है या नहीं है सवाल ये नहीं है सवाल ये है कि कोविड 19 को लेकर जो गाइडलाइन है जो प्रोटोकॉल है उसका पालन हो रहा है या नहीं हो रहा है स्वास्थ्य मंत्री कौन है या नहीं है सवाल ये नहीं है सवाल ये है कि जो जिम्मेदारी सरकार की है व्यवस्था की है वो तो पूरी की जा रही है नहीं की जा रही है जो पहली सरकार थी कमलनाथ जी की मैं इसलिए उल्लेख कर रहा हूँ क्योंकि सत्रह जनवरी को जो प्रदेशों को बताया गया था उसमें मध्य प्रदेश भी शामिल था यहाँ तमाम प्रकार की जानकारी दी गई थी मुख्यमंत्री कमलनाथ जी के पूरी सरकार को उन्होंने कोई काम 17 जनवरी से 20 मार्च तक कर नहीं किया जो 6 मार्च को स्वास्थ्य विभाग के अधिकारियों को वर्कशॉप लगानी थी उनको आ, क्या डूज एंड डोंट्स अपनाने हैं खुद की रक्षा के लिए बाकी जो भूमिका उनकी आगे बनने वाली है उन्होंने नहीं किया उन्होंने पच्चीस जनवरी को मुख्यमंत्री को भी कहा कि आप स्वयं रुचि लेकर समीक्षा कीजिए नहीं हुआ उन्होंने लगातार चार फरवरी को पीएमओ की देखरेख में वीडियो कॉन्फ्रेंस हुई 18 वीडियो कॉन्फ्रेंस हुई है 17 जनवरी से लेकर और 20 मार्च के बीच में लगभग 18 वीडियो कॉन्फ्रेंस मुझे एक एक मिनट मिनट लेकिन काम नहीं रजनीश जी 18 वीडियो कॉन्फ्रेंस कोई बड़ी बात नहीं है 18 वीडियो कॉन्फ्रेंस आजकल हर एक सरकार दिन के डेली बेसिस पे कर रही है हर रोज क्योंकि हम तो किसी से मिल नहीं सकते हम किसी के पास नहीं जा सकते तो सारा काम वीडियो कॉन्फ्रेंस ही हो रहा है मैं अपनी बात नहीं कर रही हूँ मैं मैं सारी अथॉरिटीज की बात कर रही हूँ मैं आप मुझे ये बताइए एक मिनट कर रहा हूँ पहले मुझे ये बात नहीं समझ में आई रजनीश पहले करेक्ट कर लीजिए मेरे को ये बात नहीं समझ में आई आप अपने आप को पहले करेक्ट कर लीजिए मैं कह रहा हूं कि सेंट्रल हेल्थ डिपार्टमेंट ने स्टेट गवर्नमेंट के साथ में कोविड नाइन्टीन को लेकर प्रोटोकॉल्स को लेकर गाइडलाइन को लेकर वीडियो कॉन्फ्रेंस करके बताया इन्होंने काम नहीं किया मैं ये कह रहा हूँ वीडियो कॉन्फ्रेंस तो दिन में चार बार हम कर लेते हैं उसका वो मैं नहीं बता रहा हूँ कि कितनी होती है कितनी नहीं होती है सवाल है कि एक सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट स्टेट गवर्नमेंट को कुछ कह रही है और स्टेट गवर्नमेंट नहीं कर रही है सवाल ये है और वो मैं कमलनाथ जी की कांग्रेस सरकार के बारे में बता रहा हूँ अरे आप उनके बारे में क्यों बता रहे हैं कितने दिन हो गए आपकी सरकार बने हुए हाँ तो हमने तेजी के साथ में काम किया हालात बिगड़ गए यहाँ जिस प्रकार की पीपी किट का मामला ऐसे काम किया आप सही अब आप अब आप मेरे एक मिनट एक मिनट एक रजनीश जी मुझे समझ नहीं आ रहा कि हमें चुप को बताने का मामला हो ये अगर आपने नहीं बताया है तो हमें तैयारी करना पड़ेगा रजनीश जी मुझे एक बात बताएं तो एक बात बताए ना मुझे एक बात बताए अगर पैंडमिक के समय में अगर इतनी बड़ी बीमारी अगर एक नेशन वाइड लॉकडाउन का समय जो हमने पिछले सौ साल में ऐसी मुसीबत नहीं देखी है इतनी मुसीबत बड़ी मुसीबत के लड़ने के समय में अगर एक चीफ मिनिस्टर काफी है प्रदेश के लिए तो मिनिस्टर्स की क्या ही जरूरत है आगे भी मत रखिए ना अगर आप कह रहे हैं कि सरकार का काम अच्छा ही चल रहा है बिना मंत्रियों के तो अगली बार तीस मंत्री मत बनाइएगा नहीं आपके सुझाव के लिए धन्यवाद लेकिन आ, सरकार को अगर नीति और कानून बनाने के बनाने हैं तो कैबिनेट की जरूरत होती है 
और अभी कोविड नाइन्टीन को लेकर नीति नियम कानून नहीं है कैबिनेट में बैठ के नहीं बनाने अभी उनका पालन सुनिश्चित करवाना है और अगर पूरा फोकस आज अगर हमसे आप जो सवाल कर रहे हैं वही कोविड 19 के पेशेंट के बारे में सवाल कर सकते थे हमारे तमाम प्रकार के जो मैनेजमेंट है उसके बारे में बात कर सकते थे लेकिन अभी आपका ध्यान मंत्रिमंडल है कौन मंत्री है कौन नहीं है आप भी तो आ, अपने फोकस से बदल गए ना मेरा कहना ये है कि अभी नीति नियम कानून ठीक है मैं आपको बताती हूँ ठीक है वो भी करें ठीक है आप काम के बारे में बात करना चाहते हैं बिना मंत्रियों के चलिए उसके बारे में बात करते हैं टेस्टिंग पर मिलियन एक ए, एक स्टैटिस्टिक है कि कितने टेस्ट किए जा रहे हैं हर दस लाख लोगों के लिए हर हर राज्य में आपके वहां ढाई सौ टेस्ट भी नहीं किए जा रहे हर दस लाख के लोगों के लिए जबकि दिल्ली जैसे राज्य में सात सौ से ज्यादा किए जा रहे हैं सबसे नीचे के जो लास्ट के प्रदेश हैं उनमें आता है मध्य प्रदेश का नाम पचास लोग मर चुके हैं भोपाल जैसा शहर पूरे लॉकडाउन में सील्ड प्रेमाइस में बन, बन गया है ये है स्थिति तो अब आप मुझे बताइए हाँ। कि इतनी कम टेस्टिंग क्यों हो रही है देखिए टेस्टिंग के जो फार्मूला है वो मैं और आप तय नहीं करते जो इसके एक्सपर्ट है वो हमारे अब बात तो सुन लीजिए आप आप बात सुन लीजिए मैंने एक ही सेंटेंस बोला है दूसरी बात यह है कि हम आज जो कैपेसिटी बढ़ाकर 1200 की कैपेसिटी हमारी है और हम तेजी के साथ में कर रहे हैं हमने कहीं किसी को रोकने का काम नहीं किया है और अगर लॉकडाउन में कंप्लीटली लॉकडाउन में भोपाल है तो ये एहतियात के तौर पर है और एहतियात हमने बरती है जिस प्रकार से बिगाड़ने की व्यवस्था काम हुआ है उसको सुधारने के लिए जो जो उपाय बरतने चाहिए हम कर रहे हैं और करेंगे Dr. Anand Bhan is also with me on this conversation. Good evening to you, Dr. Bhan. We've had many conversations about the nationwide fight. Tonight, the focus is on individual states, and if there are any laggards, do you think that uh, the state of Madhya Pradesh needs to ramp up on its te testing and implementation of the lockdown? Yes, thank you for having me, uh, Tanvi. So uh, the situation in MP is certainly worrisome. I mean, let's just look at the data that we have. It's the third highest number of cases for any state in India after Maharashtra and Delhi. Uh, oh, it's around 1,300 cases as of uh, this evening. Um, 200, almost 200 new cases over the last 24 hours, and this is especially worrisome for uh, a state like MP. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we don't go into national headlines very often, and it's again uh, a travesty that we're going into national headlines because of. Uh, the fact that we are having so many cases mp also is an important state because it lies both on the north south axis and the east west axis from a transport perspective you know for example if we were to talk about resumption of trains and if there were cases still going on in mp that would be very difficult to run trains because they would need to pass through mp in in most cases another reason is that in it's a big agricultural state and right now there is a lot of uh, uh, you know if if the farming industry gets impacted because of the spread of the infection that could have uh, an impact certainly on our food security as well what is worrisome is that a lot of this uh, testing that is happening right now is primarily around some of the cities so um, indore bhopal ujjain and a couple of other cities we don't really know enough about what is happening in the hinterland of the state so the smaller towns the smaller villages and whether we have uh, i have doubts that we have adequate testing happening there the chief minister himself has mentioned that uh, testing was delayed when in terms of its initiation in the state and that even now uh, tests have to be some of the uh, samples are being sent outside the test for uh, outside the state for testing and that indicates that uh, there are definitely uh, deficiencies around testing indore i think has decent rates for testing but most other parts of the state don't and for a state of our size it really requires us to ramp up on on the testing side as you mentioned a lot of the health officials at the senior level as well as uh, at the lower levels doctors nurses paramedical staff uh, leadership of the health system have been impacted by the disease i have i know many of them many of them are really good uh, officials but it's a situation right now which is a major crisis because we have a lot of individuals at senior levels who are um, out of circulation or having to work from home and they they, they would be actually leading the charge uh, for the response so i think it is imperative for the state to respond because uh, you know the numbers tell for themselves and also the numbers uh, as they are rising tell uh, to speak for themselves uh, the state its leadership uh, the public health system uh, all need to gear up for a response because what we wouldn't really want is that the spread of infection which is right now concentrated in a few cities would go into uh, the rural areas of the state which would really devastate both the economy the health system which is not the greatest in the country uh is uh, the health system has its own deficiencies and i think it will be find it very difficult to respond 
uh, to COVID-19 challenges if we are starting to see uh, the spread of infection across the state. So I think right now it's a it's a big challenge for the state. Um, the government really uh, should be thinking about how they ramp up its own uh, leadership response to it. Hopefully the chief minister will, will look into this. Um, but uh, the next couple of weeks, I think, are going to be crucial for the state. If you don't see the state uh, responding fast uh, in, a, in the way it needs to, it might actually climb to the number one um, uh, in terms of the number of cases, and that would be um, almost a disaster for the state at this point of time. Yes, uh, and we are going yes. to keep a close eye on uh, Rajni Chagarwal. I hope you have heard that the cases have been released in the past two days and how many things have been left in the state, so it is very difficult. I just want to point out and go into details of what uh, Dr. Bhan was saying. 89 personnel of the Madhya Pradesh Health Department, trust in the health department, including four IS officers and doctors, tested positive, which is what he was referring to you. That they're, they're actually the, some of the best uh, senior officials as well as doctors are currently themselves are not being put to use properly because they have had uh, to, uh, uh, you know, to be quarantined. There are, many of them are in containment zones. In fact, the Bhopal plus Charimli locality itself has been, was the one of the first ones to de be declared as a containment zone. So the challenges are many. One can only hope that states uh, like these actually buck up and contribute their own share. That's the only way to beat coronavirus. I'm going to thank our panelists for joining us. But Tamil Nadu, Bengal, Madhya Pradesh are just some of the states. We'll pick up more as we go. Some of the states are actually doing great work. And we'll also highlight those because perhaps there is a lesson to be learned in what these states are doing and what they're doing right to ensure that they don't have a large number of cases and that the lo lockdown is actually followed by everybody. Again, I will reiterate this fact, viewers. While a national policy gets designed and implemented, the onus is also on the states. And as we go move closer to the uh, date of April 2021, where some amount of relaxations will begin to be implemented in various states, it becomes even more important for the state governments to get their act together. Because if they are not able to for implement the policies right, then we will be in trouble. And all state governments have to do that. Even one lagging behind will have a massive impact, a negative impact on our fight against coronavirus. Thank you so much for joining us on this conversation. On the other side, we put the spotlight on dealing with the impact on your mental health in times of this pandemic. Stay with me.